Welcome to a day in my life while using the S23 Ultra. I skipped all the parenting parts because it's just going to be minutes and minutes of chaos, so I'll just jump right into it. Okay, so first order of business is to actually wake up the kids, take them to school, come back safe. Phase okay, so one of today's school run. Uh, I had to switch to a van because I'm also taking my nephews to school. And my friends, this is the reality of having kids. Your cars are just never gonna be clean. All right, phase two. You ready to go? Awesome. Time to get gas. Personally, I very much look forward to the day when I don't have to get gas anymore. All right. Back home from the school run. It's such a mess here in the garage studio, but that's okay, that's that's how it is. I always make sure that I at least get some exercise in because it's very important. It makes me feel a lot better. I actually tend to be more productive and it's just good for you in general. So normally I would have this case. I actually prefer using it without a case because it just feels nice, but I can't deny the fact that it's very, very slippery. I'm gonna show you a case that I use when I work out. This case is made by Taurus, T-O-R-R-A-S. It's a very simple case. And I bought one of these adapters from Quadlock because sometimes I use my bike. Also, I get to try this new pair of earbuds that I just got. It's the OnePlus Pro Buds 2. I think I said it correctly. I'm a huge fan of the AirPods Pro second generation. I actually made a video which I'll be linking at the top of this video. But the problem is, since I still have my iPhone and other iOS devices in my Mac, whenever I open this up, it prioritizes the connection with my Apple devices, which makes sense, right? So I'm like, maybe I should try something different for the S23. And so I'm gonna try this out uh, today while I work out and perhaps even make a review on it. Just as reference, this is what it looks like with the Taurus case and the quad lock adapter, which I will be attaching to one of my bikes. So I have the quad lock bike mount. This actually requires two hands to install, which means I have to push down on this and line it up and then twist it. All right, so now the phone is in place. That thing is not going anywhere. It's really, really secure. That's why I love it. It gives the, the S23 Ultra that same sense of like that huge tablet when you're driving a Tesla. It looks really nice, actually. So to take this off, I just have to push down on this and then twist it free. Except that I'm not gonna go for a ride. I'm, instead, I'm just gonna go walk and I'll be testing out the S23 Ultra alongside the OnePlus Pro Buds uh, 2. We'll see how it goes. The S23 Ultra's display is very beautiful, but tends to oversaturate the colors a bit. I also noticed that the camera had trouble finding focus on certain objects, and tapping on the screen didn't fix the problem. It really won't focus, no matter what I do. That's so weird. Also, moving forward, I expect all phones to have a 10 times zoom because I don't think I can ever go back. This thing is awesome, especially if you like car spotting. I don't know if that's your thing, but I love cars. And ever since I've always like tried taking photos and videos of cars. So this thing does exactly that. It might be a little bit of getting used to because when you switch between lenses, uh, because of the position of the lens, it kind of shifts. So you have to be really steady or anticipated. So I'm going to jump from three times to 10 times. So you see that I have to readjust. But I do like how steady the camera is by default. I don't even have the super steady mode on and I'm just like walking normally, not even trying to be steady. And the footage really just does look good. Okay, I'm gonna do a stabilization test using the just the default settings. I'm gonna run. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing but with the super steady feature on. We'll see how different it looks. So there is a weird quirk about this camera, or at least this phone that I noticed. When I'm looking at the screen, the sky is incredibly blue, like it's oversaturated, and it's just the way it pro processes the colors. But when I export the footage or import it, it is a little bit more washed out, which means it looks a little bit more natural. 
which is what I prefer. Okay, don't laugh at me. I'm gonna try to capture what I see on the S23 using my iPhone, and I'm gonna show you how the color shifts as best as I can. So when I'm looking at this right now, it looks very, very vibrant, and it ever so slightly shifts to a more natural color after. So it kind of just adjusts it. So it messes with my my brain essentially but this is really hard to, to show using two phones okay i'm gonna try to give you a better example of what i mean using the selfie camera so you can see how blue the sky is it eventually desaturates it's like the best way i could describe it yeah that's a good example of how blue the sky is Okay, so on the subject of the earbuds, first thing I noticed is that they fit really well. Like, I would say much, much better than the AirPods Pros. So if the AirPods Pros, to you, they always like fall off because I always see that in the comments, people saying, they keep falling off of my ears. I think this will be a better choice because the fit is just much better. It's also really comfortable. The only thing is sound transparency doesn't work as well as the AirPods Pros. So I can hear my environment like, pretty fine but it does still give you that sensation that there is something lodged in there which obviously there is but that's the magic of the AirPods Pros is that you kind of don't notice that they're in there noise cancellation is also actually pretty decent like it doesn't bother me when cars are driving by um, for loud noises but I think the most important thing is the sound like especially the bass I thought the AirPods Pro sounded really good I was really surprised at how these sound. I think they sound maybe 20% better. And in the grand scheme of things, maybe 20% doesn't sound a lot. But if you're listening to music, like you're really paying attention to the music, 20% is a huge difference. This is completely subjective, but I think they look good. Dare I say even better than the AirPods Pros. The volume that I use for my music hovers around 40 to 50% because there's so much more detail and it gets much louder than the AirPods Pros. I don't really have to crank up the volume. I mean, the AirPods Pros still sound good, don't get me wrong. These just sound much better. The zoom on this thing is, is so hard to let go of. Like, seriously, that is pretty cool. See those trucks there? This is the original view. Like realistically, this is what my eyes see, like that. But, whoa, that's just really cool. All right, walk done. Time to work out with these two phones. Uh, just for reference, the this is the iPhone times two, S23 times three, iPhone times three, and S23 times 10. Okay, this might sound silly to some, but one of the ways I test how good the, uh, uh, noise cancellation is is when this sound that sound doesn't hurt my ears so my overall thoughts so far is that i really like the the oneplus buds pro 2 they fit really well they sound great noise cancellation works not as good as the airpods pros noise transparency works definitely not as good as the airpods pros probably one of the biggest issues for me when you are um, squeezing on the stem to enable noise cancellation. Uh, it takes a second, like it takes a beat slower compared to the AirPods Pros. And the chime that it makes is gentle and it's pleasant to the ears, but sometimes it's just too soft that you can't even hear if it's engaged, like if you turn it on or off. So those are some things that I noticed. And also you can't control the volume using the stems. And I kind of made fun of the AirPods Pros uh, version 2 for having that feature in the beginning, but now I realize that it's actually a really, really handy feature. But I mean, you can still use voice commands. Uh, otherwise, these are really, really great buds, especially when you're working out. Back from my workout. I get ready and get to that one. That's very important and then get ready because I have to go pick up the kids. All right, so I'm about to pick up my son from school, but I wanted to quickly show you this really cool Alcantara case that I know I featured in my video, but the other cool thing about this is it has a built-in MagSafe, the magnets basically in this case, which means that I can use it with this MagSafe car mount that I have. And it actually sticks pretty well, 
which makes it easier for me to say, hey, play some songs by Blippi on Spotify. This is there you go. So that's my son's uh, favorite playlist as I pick him up. Oh yeah, and I also gotta get this fixed. This is the second um, rock chip, if you can still call it a rock chip, because the crack basically <laughs> goes all the way up. This is the second one that we got within a two month period. Here's the first one. It's all the way down. So. You know, a couple things that needs to get fixed. Okay, so I'm back in the studio. I need to clean this up. One thing I do wish that the S23 um, have, um, it doesn't have MagSafe charging, obviously, because this one's made for Apple, but you can see how convenient it is to have something like that. I mean, I guess I would trade MagSafe for super fast charging if it means that I don't have to keep charging it, right? So that makes sense to me. Um, but it is one thing I do wish, or I kind of wish that the S23 has. So right now I am filming a reel for a collaboration that I have on Instagram. Just want to share you guys uh, kind of like, I guess how I make one of these reels. This is my A7C camera with a grip and a top handle. Having these two handles just make it easier for me to, to, to kind of switch around. Um, I have a little cage for this particular camera and I have a system from Falcam, which is basically a quick locking mechanism. So I have one right here and also this one right here. So I can mount my camera on the tripod easily like this. And if I have to switch it, I can just pull that and do this. But yeah, that's uh, that's the idea. It makes it uh, much more convenient and easier for me to switch from landscape um, or vertical shooting to horizontal. This is what I'll be filming today. This is a, a mesh router by TP-Link. And I figured I'd just put it on the desk. I have a light there, light right here. And I'll probably just use this monitor as like a, like a nice background. I raise the desk a little bit. All right, much better. This right here is one of my favorite tools. It's a little magnetic light by Ulanzi. And I use this to light up my photos and some of my videos. Uh, really nice for product photography. You can change the color temperature. And since it um, has a magnet right here, you can be creative where you want to place them. So like here, for example. But in this case, right behind here. Just so I can get like a nice kind of like light on that side. Just finished uh, filming this part of the reel. Hope you can see it, but yeah, this is... All right, let's go check it out. See what we can do with this one. And once I'm done using them, I put the batteries back, you know, to tidy up. And if you haven't seen the video that I've made on this little gear corner that I, you know, that's what I call it. I'll leave the link here at the top of this video if you want to see how I actually use this corner. Editing done. I want to share with you what I, um, I came up with. <laughs> So here's a problem that I've encountered. Um, I work with an Apple computer. Just transferring files from the S23 is a pain in the butt, to be honest with you. I've tried a couple of different apps that promises to make that uh, problem go away, but not really. And I did some digging and I found this thread, basically this person saying the same problem, and someone actually made an app, which is this. It's free, I downloaded it and it works. I know it sounds really simple, but in the last few weeks that I've used the S23, it's been one of my biggest pain points. I'll leave the link in the description below in case anyone who is planning to try out an Android or maybe switch completely to an Android device and you have Mac uh, products or Apple products, this is going to be really, really helpful for you. After a month of using the S23 Ultra as my daily driver, here's what I've learned. The learning curve from switching OSs isn't nearly as bad as the way apps behave on Android. Now let me be clear that this isn't a problem specific to the S23. Social media apps in general just have terrible support on Android devices versus iOS. 
The camera on the S23 Ultra is impressive, and I understand why they market this phone as having, if not the best, really, really great cameras. But the correlation between what the camera captures and what the beautiful display shows me can be a bit broken at times. It may be a setting that I simply have not discovered, but it's really hard to trust what I see versus what I shot due to the filter-like effect of the screen. This is not a problem for casual shots, as I think the oversaturation of colors make for a pleasing experience when you're viewing on your phone. However, once you upload it to social media, assuming you can do it without any hiccups, you might be disappointed to find out that the colors aren't as beautiful as you were led to believe. And forget about shooting in HDR if you plan on sharing directly to Instagram. The app can't seem to process it correctly versus when I upload HDR content on iOS. Again, I don't think this is entirely the S23 Ultra's fault. My workflow is rather simple. Shoot content, send to computer, upload to social media. There were a few extra steps I had to take, but it was definitely possible with the S23 Ultra. Voice assistance with Google is such a joyful experience compared to Siri. I can even ask Google to read text messages in Tagalog. Try it, it's pretty impressive. As a regular daily phone that I get to poke around in and play with, I feel like I've gotten my money's worth. Something I've had a hard time justifying with Apple's flagship devices. Where the S23 Ultra really falls short though is the way I use the camera to take photos or videos of my kids. The camera lags too much to capture fleeting moments and feels clunky in general. I was reminded of this fact after a friend of mine asked me to take some photos and videos using his iPhone. But if you treat the S23 Ultra more like a mirrorless camera where you have to plan and prepare for your shots, it's a superb system of cameras that just happen to be attached to a phone. I don't know if I can go back to not having a 10 times zoom. It's that good. Regarding the fingerprint scanner that I mentioned in the last video, all I can say is that my experience isn't as accurate as others claim it to be. You can say what you want, but I gain nothing by being untruthful with my experience. I mean, this is a phone I paid for myself and have been happily enjoying for the last month. I suppose if that's the biggest criticism anyone can throw at me, then the rest of my experience seemed to be on point, which means that the S23 Ultra really is a great phone quirks and all. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you guys again soon.